Hello everyone, thank you for watching. In this video we are going to take a brief look at what flipped learning is uh, and what it might look like in the classroom with a few examples. In this video I'd like you to have a think about what the most valuable use of the face-to-face -face time you have with your students is. Ben Stein's performance as the economics teacher in Ferris Bueller's Day Off is one of my favourite scenes in the whole movie. But we've all had this teacher, and I'm sure we all remember how unenjoyable those lessons were. But statistically speaking, we've all been this teacher, which is kind of a scary thought that in this piece of research, which is only a couple of years old, 2014, and with 2 million points of data, it does have some credibility, more than half of lessons were based around engaging with new content. Not going deeper with older content, not trying to get mastery, but learning about new content. Now let's take a look at what a traditional classroom might look like. The video that's playing on the right is of a physics class. Now it's an 87 minute lesson and the video is playing at 200 times normal speed. This is the whole lesson that he's put up here. Uh, it's a physics teacher by the name of Thomas Palmer and this is before he started flipping his lessons. This is what happens in a regular traditional classroom. The lecture is delivered up the front, there's minimal interaction with the students uh, other than some question and answer and there's not much doing. There's a lot of writing and taking of notes but there's not a whole lot of doing happening. The video that's playing on the right is the same lesson in the background, the traditional lecture lesson. The video on the front though is the same content, same lesson, about 12 months later after he had started to flip his lessons. You can see there's a lot more engagement going on. The students are a lot more involved in what they're doing but they're not sitting and taking notes. They're able to come up and ask Thomas individual questions about what they're learning, about issues that they're having and they're able to engage with experiments more. So this is obviously a physics class, there's experiments going on, but they're able to engage in hands-on explorative activities. Now there's an obvious difference in the camera per camera perspective here as well. The, the traditional one, the teacher is the center of the room. Everybody's looking at the teacher and at the whiteboard. In the flipped classroom however, the lecture has already been completed before the students come to class. Whether it's at home with a pre-recorded video or whether there is some other method being used, it's the explicit teaching component has been done prior to the beginning of class. Which means that when students come to class uh, for this particular topic, they can f the teacher can focus more on delivering ex exploration. They can focus on answering questions and dealing with misconceptions and that students might still have. They can make sure that students are actually engaged and are learning deeper and broader about whatever the topic might be. Students can do these experiments and they have time to do more experiments. I'd like to share with you my journey into flipped learning. It began with uh, my internship back in 2013. I was in a year 5 6 class and the teacher was in flipping his mathematics. Uh, so what that meant was that where traditional flipped learning, the videos are watched prior to class he was in flipping where students were watching their videos in the classroom. He was still getting some, uh, a lot of the same benefits. He had more time for one-on-one -on -one or small group sessions with students who needed the extra support and students were still able to work at a pace that suited them in order to achieve set goals by set times. Last year I took it a step further and I began recording some flipped professional learning for teachers uh, to help upgrade their technology skills and their self-efficacy around the use of technology in the classroom. This year I've stepped it up again and I started flipping my spelling. Whereas normally on a Monday morning I would come in, I would deliver the spelling pretest. Students with a device are able to sit, press play on the video for their year group and are able to move through their spelling pretest at a pace that works for them. I've taught them that they need to press pause at the end of each word so they've got time to write the word down and they're not being rushed through. The students that are using it have found that they much prefer it and I'm also finding that they are finishing their spelling pretest about five to seven minutes earlier than the rest of the class. So there's five to seven minutes where they can be engaged with some other activity and if we had the whole class doing their spelling in this manner we would be able to achieve significantly more and move through with other learning activities. I have ten tentatively begun doing my mathematics lessons in a similar fashion where I am providing at the moment I'm curating videos. This gives students with the devices the opportunity to gain the active learning, the explicit teaching at a pace that works for them. They can press pause, they can rewind, they can rewind again, they can then come and see me and say, Mr Mitchell I still don't quite get it, this is what I'm not quite understanding and I can deal with that misconception. Whereas with the rest of the class as I'm going through trying to deliver the explicit teaching I'm having to answer questions on the fly which is derailing the train of thought for a lot of students in terms of what we're actually learning about at that point in time. So it slows the whole lesson down and it means that we don't get to get through as much hands-on application of whatever that topic is. 
if you want to flip, there's a few things that you need to consider. Start with one thing. I started with spell. My, the spelling videos, they run for about four minutes, and that's including both initial reading of the words and then the marking component, which I do tack on. I do trust my students to self-mark. Those four and a half to five minute videos take about 10 minutes to produce. That's including recording and post-production. Uh, so they're really quick and easy. The Flip Teacher Professional Learning videos, they're all under 10 minutes. They take me about 20 to 25 minutes. That's including the preparation, the setup, the recording, and the post-production. So there's not a massive time investment. It just requires you to be organized, which we should all be anyway as teachers. You just really need to be organized and know exactly what you're doing, which feeds into my next point, which is determine your workflow. There's a few things that you need to keep in mind if you're going to flip, and organization and planning is a really key thing for flipping. So determine your workflow, what it is that you're going to use to demonstrate the learning, how are you going to capture that, where are you going to host it? And the other component, as well is obviously how you're going to assess what students are learning and what are you then going to use the extra class time that you've gained to do. You need to consider as well, are you going to curate or create? Ideally, you want to be creating your own because it is you as the teacher that has the relationship with those students, not any of the other videos that are available. If you're interested, a bit of a what next, there's some links there to some reviews. Please come along to the Teach Me on Friday with a question, a concern, a query, something you want to know more about. I would love to be able to turn my seven minute block at the Teach Me into a question and answer session. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on Friday night.